Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is up? What is good? The king, the king who of lightning is here today bringing you guys and gals Toriko. Oh, Paper. Toriko chapter 396, the final chapter of Toriko. Still yet unseen ingredients. Like, and they have the backpacks on. Like, they're going on an adventure. Like, dude. An adventure that I don't think we're going to see. No, we're not, because this is the final chapter of Toriko. Fuck, man. Like, this... With gratitude to all ingredients everywhere, thanks for the meal. Now then, where shall we head next? So, Toriko. No, what the hell? It's, come on, manga stream, stop fucking me up right now. Toriko, Komatsu, why to go on adventure? Hotel Gourmet, Fork and Knife. Toriko, just what is that? Uh, North Face? Nah. <laughs> World K, and like there's just a knife. So listen, they're heading on the adventure. Where are they going? The only options left are space, bro. God damn it, man. Let me think, hold on. Let me not, let me not like jump to conclusions because they have explored like the entirety of their world. Like what else is there? And then when you have still yet unseen ingredients, it's like the only other option is spaceship. Like, I really, really want a sequel, but. All right, let me just go into the chapter, man. Let me go to the chapter. So here we have Toriko and his appetite. They're eating. And this is the color page. We have blue and we have, well, what is that, purple? I mean, is that his color? Because, I mean, at first we thought it was green, but then we realized that Neo was black, so he could be black cells as well, the brother cells. However, given his color, he looks more like a light purple, so he's talked to his appetites. And actually, Torgo's hair is not red. Now, when he consumed red, I thought that his hair turned red, but it looks like it's still blue, though maybe that was a temporary thing. And here's a close-up of the myriad of ingredients. Of course, things I can't begin to describe what they are. Well, this guy looks like some kind of crustacean with a mustache. I mean, you know what? <laughs> Stupidity! It is what it is. A few years after Toriko and Rin's wedding reception. So this is the new fairy tale castle. So here you have Komatsu talking to Otake. An orphanage where children can eat God. Really? These orphans are blessed. You finally realized your dream, Take. Thank you, Koma. It's thanks to IGO and the Seiseya organization. Let me get an actual picture of the orphanage here. This uh, fairy tale. Not T-A-I-L, but T-A-L-E, thank God. We're coming for you, nigga. This is where the kids go, the orphans kid go, to consume vast quantities of amazing ingredients. Because Otake, he's now like one of the three legendary chefs that actually cooked God. Given the fullest cooperation and the efforts on the selective breeding and artificial cultivation of God, that this castle became a reality. Apparently, Ume is teaching at a culinary school. The Nakume, his own culinary school? Not the Ume culinary school. Holy shit, bro, okay. Ume making gains. Making huge gains. Ramsey, take notes. Okay, Ume. Damn. Apparently, students are rushing to enroll there as well. Just to study under a teacher who has personally prepared and cooked God. I hope his hair doesn't go white again. <laughs> And how about you, Koma? Still the same as- No, Koma is going with Tori- I know he's going with Toriko. You can see the first page. Traveling around with your partner as a legendary duo. Okay, it says right there. Ack, I forgot. What'd you forget? Toriko, didn't you? Yep. I had an appointment with Toriko, and it's almost time. I better get going. I'll see you later, Take. Where are you off to this time, Koma? Space. Space, man. 
They're going on space adventures, bro. Yo, space. Well, uh, be careful out there. Oh, yeah, it's space. See, space. Oh, it's like people of the Toriko fan base have been theorizing for like years on end that Toriko at some point would go on space adventures. And it sucks so much that this is the final chapter of Toriko. Now we know that Komatsu and Toriko are going on space, like legitimate space adventures. And understand that because of Neo, the universe is now populated with stuff of the blue verse. And it's it's the culmination of the red verse and the blue verse. I mean, Fuck! Is fuck! 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 Uh. To be fair, there's nothing out there that can topple Neo when it comes to an adversary. Neo is like the pinnacle fucker, or he was the pinnacle fucker. So there's gonna be no more adversaries that are gonna be able to give Toriko any challenge because he's like the pinnacle with the other demon inside of him. He's the pinnacle fucker. However, I still want to see what the universe had to offer when it came from just a crazy like universe building standpoint. And Michitoshi would probably rock that heavy. When it came to the rushing part of Toriko, obviously that was severely nerfed, which sucked massively. But that's his forte nonetheless, world building. And if he could broaden the scope to the universe, I mean, I mean, just the solar system was crazy, but the fucking universe. Ah! Fuck. 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 It's the potential. It's the potential that Toriko had, even more so than we see now. And knowing that we're not going to see it, it's like. It's slamming me in the face, and it's like, fuck. And here is some giant insect thing. So simple, yet so cool. So simple. Oh, come on, get, come on, man. The first time Komatsu meets Toriko, reenacted. And this time, I think he's actually using golden metal, golden material, as his fishing rod. I'm pretty sure he is. But the bait is still a very large insect. So I'm assuming a very large fish is going to come out and eat it. And there's going to be a very large bird that comes out and takes the fish. And then Toriko is going to slam it down. Maybe. Let's see. Here's Komatsu. Here's Toriko. Yo, you're late, Komatsu. Sorry about that. I got tied up chatting with Take over at his park. Man, it's really beautiful today. Even the sun, before I'd even realized it, it had returned back to how it was before. You see, that's something that I also want to get more details on. The eclipse itself. Like, how did it work exactly? Because the eclipse of Toriko was a bit different than what we get on actual planet Earth. But that was never really fully... Hold on. Let me not even... Hold on. Wait a second. Yo! Okay, wait! I need to continue reading sometimes because I think about things and apparently they start talking about it. But what the fuck? Speaking of that, I figured out the secret of the Gurmi Eclipse, Komatsu. What, seriously? Yeah, it's really not that big of a deal. It's a gigantic Gurmi satellite, invisible to our eyes, was just covering up the sun like a giant lid over a pot. A Gurmi satellite. So, I have to assume that Joey and whoever made this thing, like the Blue Nitro, they made this thing. That's my guess, because they were the ones that were ripening the world, and that's how they made the Eclipse. So, this satellite must have been fucking huge. Yeah, this satellite, now that I think about it, it has to be absolutely massive in order to block out the sun for the entirety of a planet that basically is bigger than Neptune. This thing must be huge or at least really close to the sun itself, but it's invisible to the eye. An artificial satellite created out of gourmet matter. Apparently the night, apparently the nitro, I really gotta just keep on fucking reading. Cause like, I kinda see where he's going with these things, but he always answers the question that I asked on like the next panel, like the next page. Apparently, the nitro had originally created it for preparing planets for food. A cooking satellite. So then it's a gigantic cooking utensil. Yeah, I guess so. The scale is so huge I can't begin to imagine. Yeah, it must be fucking huge. 
Ooh, that's what I'm saying. So then, there could even be a frying pan to saute. Surprise, motherfucker. Oh, no! Wait, bro. Yo. Wait, hold on. Let me go down. Let me go down. There must be something here. Nigga. I, I, <laughs> yeah. The fucking Demon King, bro. The Demon King. The Demon King. Because when he said, like, a frying plant to saute the planet, I remember that picture of the Demon King. He's, like, over, like, the planet, like, sprinkling some shit. And then he's, like, sauteing. <laughs> wow. Look, wow. Yep, apparently there are. They actually exist. They can actually cook worlds? Like actual physical worlds? So then, there could even be a frying pan to saute planets or some pot to simmer them in too. Yep, apparently there are. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me just, wait, 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 wait. Let me backpedal all the way back. The scale is so huge, I can't even begin to imagine it. So then there could even be a frying pan to saute planets or a pot to simmer them in too. Yep, apparently there are. And Torgo's hair is actually longer. I just noticed that shit too. <laughs> I got caught up in the planets being stirred and whatnot, but Toriko's hair is longer. And here we have the Demon King panel, so let me read this. Long, long ago, there was apparently a folktale about a giant demon king that would gnaw and chew on the sun. Looking at all this, it may not have been fiction at all. <laughs> Fairy tales come true. I had the notion that Neo was the Demon King. To further back that all up, long, long ago, a long, long time ago, in a galaxy far away, there was apparently a folktale about a giant demon king that would gnaw and chew on the sun. The Gourmet Astronomy Research Team first observed Gourmet Energy immediately following the Gourmet Big Bang. And the reason I'm able to now detect electromagnetic waves, I never was. What the fuck? Toriko. But I thought that was Coco's thing, hold on. And the reason I'm able to now detect electromagnetic waves I never was prior to Akashi's full course is because of that. But what really is shocking is what I saw in those waves. Is that... No! What is this? Uh, this nigga. <laughs> Yeah, come on, man. Like, what are they, gods now? Like, they're deep? Like, no, like, they're full. How do I explain this to the people? How do I explain this to you, motherfuckers? What? That's fucking Mitra, bro. That's Mitra. That's Ichiryu, Jiro, Akashi, and Froze? What? Like, I, I mean, it's. <laughs> like, come the image was like a family all gathered around a dinner table, all sharing a meal together. Why is the meal a galaxy? Like, why, why, why the fuck does the meal have to be a galaxy, bro? So. <sighs> so, wait. <laughs> this is like, yo, it's like, bro. So they have now become spiritual energy bodies that reside within the universe itself. And they are like bigger than a galaxy. And they're sitting around this galaxy as if it were a dinner table. And if the Demon King is of the same ilk, then the Demon King would also be an energy body that is bigger than our sun that could actually chew our sun or whatever. But, but, hold on, but. Isn't time zero a different dimension though? Okay, you know what? Let me continue reading. I'm gonna save all this shit for later. What the heck is that supposed to mean? So giant beings are all surrounding a planet eating it. 
not a planet. What they were sitting around was 10 light years in diameter. The Milky Way, 10 light years. 10 light years in 10, no, 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 it should be way bigger than that, hold on. Okay, so according to the Google, let me show you real quick. The Milky Way is 100,000 light years in diameter. All right, not 10, 100,000 light years. This could be a mistake on his part, Mitsudoshi's part, or it could be a translation error. You know what, hold on. Let me go and check out Batoto, because Batoto, they have Toriko out too, probably. And the way I see it is that Toriko has a better translation on Batoto than it does on Manga Stream. And I think Kiss Manga also takes the Batoto translation of Toriko. The translation is the Haiwa Mata Noboru. They're the guys that translate Toriko. And I'm pretty sure that it's different than the Manga Stream translation. But let me go and check real quick. I gotta go and confirm this shit. A fucking 10 light years, because it should be 100,000 light years. Uh... Yeah, no, it is. What they were sitting around was a galaxy 10 light years in diameter. So that is definitely what they're saying. What they were sitting around was a galaxy 10 light years in diameter. Yeah, so that's both Batoto and Manga Stream. Huh. 10 light years, that makes no sense though. It's a small ass fucking galaxy. I mean, it's still a galaxy nonetheless, but just a really small galaxy compared to the actual, to our Milky Way, if that number's correct. You see, now I need to go and read the Viz translation when it comes out. For sure, because I want to confirm that number. I want to confirm that 10 light year number. But nonetheless, let me just continue on with this live reaction of Toriko. Just how huge were these creatures? Well, I had some questions about that too, so I asked the appetites inside of me. The appetites inside of you. Okay, we're getting like mad intel right now. Okay, so that's okay. So this is when he was talking to them, and they had the food all in front of them and whatnot. So... And they told me all kinds of things. Like what? That once long ago, there was a world where all the various gourmet gods lived. What the f- What the fuck is going on? Once long ago, there was a world where all the various gourmet gods lived called the furthest lands. And due to the inflation of appetite there, all their gourmet energy exploded all at once. That was the gourmet big bang of 13.7 billion years ago. Okay, so the gourmet god created the gourmet universe <laughs> because, and I quote, due to the inflation of appetite there, <laughs> all their energy, all their gourmet energy exploded all at once. That was the gourmet big bang of 13.7 billion, B, billion years ago. Gourmet gods, they're real. With such terrific force that it would expand the entire universe. All these, in oh wait, hold on a second. The universe itself existed and these beings reside within the universe. So the gourmet big bang is different than the actual big bang. But these beings are like early beings of the universe. Because it says right here, with such terrific force that would expand the entire universe, all of these ingredients were sent flying, scattered off throughout its vastness. So the vastness of the universe already existed as far as I'm reading it. I could be reading it wrong, but that's what I'm getting. And with them, one family of gods grabbed hold of ingredients they wanted to protect. Those were the planet's full course. So don't tell me that the family of gods were Ichiryu, Jiro, Mitra, Froze, and Akasia. Don't, yo! But hold on a second though, hold on, hold on. Froze's gourmet form was like her, was called God Cooking, I believe. So, let me continue. But that family was also separated and scattered from the four, what? Wait a sec, he's... Wait, wait, wait! But well, that family was also separated and scattered from the force of the Gourmet Big Bang. And over the long passage of time, as Gourmet Energy began to change the colors of their favorite ingredients, many universes began to... Okay, this is a fucking... This is genuinely a multiverse, bro. Oh! A friend of mine told me that this chapter does not disappoint. It does not disappoint at all. And even still, those gods continue to protect their full course in each of those universes. Can we please get a sequel? Can we please? I need it! 
no! It's so good, though! The Gourmet Big Bang. Okay, so maybe the Gourmet Big Bang did form the universe itself. Because they should be in the red universe. Red. Black. Blue. Green. White! There's another one that's, like, empty. Between the black and the red, there's also one there that's, like, unknown. And each universe has its own set of full courses. But that family was also separated and scattered from the force of the Gourmet Big Bang. And over the long passage of time, as Gourmet Energy began to change the colors of their favorite ingredients, many universes began to form. And even still, those gods continue to protect their full course in each of those universes. Okay, so again, here we have red, green, white, blue, black, and then one other one, which I'm not sure what's going on there exactly. Even if their favorite food should change, they hope to one day bring the full course back together to share with... Okay, so when Acacia mentioned like the true full course, there is a true full course. But it's not the universal full course because the universal full course is the is the planet's full course. It's the multiverse. It's the multi. I want a sequel so fucking bad. It's the multiverse full course. Okay, that was protected by this family of gods of gourmet gourmet gods even if their favorite food should change they hope to one day bring the full course back together to share with one another the father was black neo the father was black the mother white the eldest son was red the second son was green the green verse and the third son was blue so okay so we cheer you eldest son second eldest son green third eldest son Midra, blue father acacia black neo black uh, mother white like the countermeasure to acacia frozen that kind of reminds me of acacia's family fuck yeah it does it absolutely does acacia's family could be the red universe representation of the multiverse what the fuck? It's like, I have the question, and they always answer the question, bro. It's funny, hold on. Acacia's gourmet cells, Neo was black. Frozen's appetite was white, I think. The appetite that felt like it could wrap up any and everything without a speck of dirt to defile its color. So then, the old man was red and Jiro was green. So does that mean Jiro was a devil? Jiro. Was he really green? What if Tepe's hair was green, it would have been long ago before he'd gone gray. Tepe's hair, I think, is green. No, it is green. Yeah, it's green, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's green. It would have been long ago before he'd gone gray. So now he's gray. I guess that means Midra could have been blue. By the way, apparently that Buddha looking thing inside of me, dude, it's the, it's the other guy. Hold on, what is he? Wait, 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 wait. What? He doesn't answer the question. Wait, 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 wait. He doesn't answer. Okay, hold on. So right there, they're talking about how Midra is blue. I guess that means Midra could have been blue. In fact, that all very well may be so. By the way, apparently that Buddha-looking thing inside of me, and it doesn't continue. I thought it would have continued next page. But then Komatsu says right here, do you think the first letters of all the full course that make up the word Pangea, do you think that could... But see, that's what I'm saying, though. It's like he just says something about the Buddha-looking thing inside of him, and that doesn't finish. It doesn't finish. Am I missing a page? Hold on. Hey, hold on. Okay, let me, let me go check Batoto real quick. On Batoto, they answer... Man, Batoto, that's what I'm saying. This is what Batoto says, all right? So let me read the whole thing for you right there. Akatsu's grimming cells Neo were black, so maybe Froze's songs were white. The appetite that felt like it would envelop anything and didn't have a speck of dirtiness in it. Then was my old man red and Jiro green? Did Jiro even have a demon? Maybe Tepe had green hair because the color skips a generation. Because he was consuming meat that... Guinness gave him. I don't know if Midra was blue, but that might have been the case. By the way, the Buddha looking guy in me is white, apparently. White! Okay, so of the Froze kind. According to what Batoto saying, the Buddha, the third Gurmi demon inside of Toriko, is white. Red, blue, white. Ichiryu, Midra, 
Rose. Now I continue back on manga stream. Do you think the first letters of all the full course that make up the words Pangea, do you think that could be the furthest lands where all those gods once lived? The gourmet energy that fragmented off from those once unbelievably giant powerful gourmet gods. That is the true identity of gourmet luck. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit. So that's why they were called gourmet brethren. The causality of the universe is, is literally the fragmented energy of the gourmet gods. That's oh man, shit. This chapter does not disappoint. They might be leading us to that land. And from the effects of the full courses, Adam, I've been gradually becoming able, becoming able, ugh. I don't know, you know what? Okay, fuck this noise. I'm going to Batoto. I ain't say that Mango Stream is bad, but I, I prefer, I prefer Batoto. The fragmented gourmet energy of those crazy, gigantic gourmet gods is a true identity of food luck. They may have led us to that land, and because of the effects of Adam, of the full course, the gourmet matter has been gradually becoming visible for me. Now that I can see it clearly, outer space looks like a gourmet food paradise. Tori, okay, so now the fish reels in. Toriko-san, you've got to bite. Here comes the fish. The fuck is this thing? Never mind. <laughs> it's a clam. A shellfish. It looks so familiar. Wait, is this that species from Blue Grill in Area Six? A giant? Really? Okay, so apparently it's a baby giant shell. Yeah, I mean that's what they're saying. Call it minimum shell. <laughs> Call it minimum shell. Or it's a baby. But he's no, you should be eating it. Fuck it. Eat it. The team of gourmet astronomers remolded this shell into a spaceship for me. Really? Then this is a space camping. The baby giant shell, or the, the minimum shell, is a space camping monster. And the gourmet astronomers remolded its shell so they have their spaceship oh and he's been raising in the okay so okay okay so that's why you're not gonna eat it okay so what do you say we get going komatsu what we're going already toriko-san did you tell rin-san about this yeah i told her i'm going out for a little hunt a little hunt we're going to outer space we don't even know when we'll get back relax minimum shell can pass light speed what the fuck is this thing wait dude like bro like, this fucking stupidity, hold on, bro, okay, relax, minimum shell can pass light speed and slip through gaps in space-time, in other words, it's a, I, for I forget, the back channels of the camping monsters, I forget that, in other words, it's a back channel, even if we're traveling for years, the reverse Urashima effect will let a home, Urashima Taro, the legend mentioned earlier, that's similar to a Rip Van Wink, really? Oh. Even if we're traveling for years, the reverse, the reverse, the reverse. See, that's because when they said Rip Van Winkle, I'm like, wait a second, but that's the complete opposite. But then he says the reverse, the reverse Urashima or the reverse Rip Van Winkle effect will let us get back to Earth in just a few days. And mind you, they have gourmet cell demons and whatnot. So they can live for centuries on end. But is anybody coming with us like Coco, Sunny, or Zebrasan? Oh yeah, what about Terry? Terry went back to his pack. His, I thought Terry was her. That fight with Neo drove all of the then active eight kings into retirement, though all their wounds healed. Mother Snake should be just fucking gone. Guinness cannot be alive. Guinness had back of the head. Are you, no, there's no way. Guinness cannot be alive, bro. Any king that suffered even one loss is no longer a king. Damn, that is a harsh pecking order. Any king that suffered even one loss is one, is no longer a king. Hold on, but Mother Snake and Whale King Moon fought. Who won that? Was it a draw? Therefore, they're still kings? Like... Now in the gourmet world, there's a battle of warlords to capture the titles of the next eight kings going on. And Terry is a part of it. I mean, Terry should not be winning, but either way. Speaking of which, apparently a lot of wild beasts from the human world have tossed their hats into the ring. The Troll Kong, Devil Orochi, and Regal Mammoth, they've all gotten way stronger. Man. This some old bullshit. Like the level five and like the level 10, like the level 50 motherfuckers gonna be challenging level 600, 1,000, 20,000, what? 
No, 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 no. Okay, they got way stronger, but man, I mean, like, still, I'd say. Like, I mean, when you say way stronger, we're talking about like they jump from like single digits and like barely double digits to like mid three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. <laughs> what kind of power leap you have to go through? Jesus! All right, you know what? Like, what? The troll con? Really? The troll? Con? Man. By the way, Komatsu, Coco and the others are already traveling through space. Uh, bro, no info on that? No 411, no text message? No, you know, letter, nothing. Coco and Zebra said they're looking in space for the last item on their full course. We've got to get moving too, or Zebra's gonna eat it, <laughs> or Zebra's gonna eat it all. Okay, let's shove off Komatsu. Okay, Toriko-san, someone wants, ah, damn it, dude. Damn it, damn it, someone once said. Oh, they're flying off in the space. That somewhere in this universe there are sweet stars. Get the fuck out. There are sweet stars. That are just like flower dumplings. Flower dumping stars. That in giant planetary craters. There is. <laughs> Why is that? There's Ferbert endlessly bubbling out. Oh, God damn it, bro. Why is there. Sh what the f what is that? What the fuck? The Dumbo Space Elephant Horde? What? <laughs> no! No! Cosmos! Wait, 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 wait. That there is a pack of delicious elephants, each as big as an entire star? Cosmos mammoths that form a nebula? Are you serious? Okay, alright. <laughs> No, I want to see it. I want to see the Cosmo Mammoths. No, no. Fuck. I want to see the Cosmos Mammoths, bro. <laughs> that form a nebula. Oh God. Okay, bro. This is too much. This is like, bro. Like how? And the crazy part, too, is that this is one of five universes. Red, black, white, blue, green, green. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me, wait a second. Let me get back to the cosm, the cosmos, man. That there is a space food repository that only appetites can enter. A space pantry. Oh my god. Within which many yet undiscovered ingredients rest. And new ingredients are always being born and growing. That sometimes gourmet gods kill for those ingredients. That the gourmet paradise where those gods once lived. The furthest. Oh my. Dude! Like on some like Beerus home shit. But like Toriko sized. What is that? Are those. Are those stars or black holes, nigga? What the fuck are those? What are those? That the gourmet paradise where those gods once lived, the furthest lands. That there, god ingredients beyond imagination flood out endlessly. What in the fuck is happening? Okay, I thought that the final page of Toriko was gonna be like them or on a dinner table. Okay, hold on a second. Let me go to Manga Stream because Manga Stream has a better texture so I can see what the fuck is happening right now. There's just so much shit. Once there was a gourmet paradise where all those gods lived, the furthest lands. Their unimaginable, wondrous ingredients of the gods, endlessly spilling out and overflowing. The people of the world held these beliefs in their hearts and stomachs as they dreamed of one day 
eating them all. And then we have just a clusterfuck of shit. Like, there's space eggs. There's, like, this giant space snake planet thing that puts Mother Snake to shame. What is going on there? Why are their planets skewered? No! Look, Komatsu. A Midorashi Dango planet. It looks so good. Dude. Their planets being skewered. Like, they're Dango. These turtles. Like, some kind of space egg thing that's already cracked. What the f Like, space cotton candy? Space ray, that's plan, are they? Yeah, I, I think it is, like space manta rays. First thing first, let's get us some of those dongo. No way, they're way too huge. Something just appeared. What is that, Toriko? It's a space Taipan. We're gonna fight this thing. Dude, yo, there's so much shit. Bro, like there's just so much. There's, like space is populated now with all these different, Neo, it was Neo, Neo, took all this shit from the blue verse, put into the red verse, and lo and behold, we have this clusterfuck. Like, what the fuck? And the blue universe still has its own shit. I don't doubt it. Like these weird fish in the corner that have like eyes on the side. They look kind of freaky and they're traveling in a pack. I mean, this is supposed to be space and they're surviving. These look like jellyfish, space jellyfish. I mean, that kind of have like a mushroom top to them too. This is mental. Is that some kind of space blue whale? <laughs> Stupidity. Bro. Wow. And this, the final page. As long as we're alive, our stomachs will hunger. So the adventure will never end. Thank you for enjoying Toriko for these past eight and a half years. For more info on Jump Comics and my next work, please check out the next page. Starting next issue, Moe. Okay, so the series that's going to replace Toriko. The Ore Goraso begins. Next issue. Fuck. <sighs> I really want a sequel, bro. I really, really do. There's so much, there's so much out there, bro. It's a plethora of gourmet, what the, why, hey, wait, hold on. What the fuck? What the fuck is this? Dude, why is there a handgun? I, yo, what? What the, f <laughs> why is there a revolver just in the middle of space? It's Hanoo. What? Hold on. Is that actually like a thing? Hold on, let me go check Batoto real quick. It's on Batoto too. Why? Why is there a revolver in the middle of space? And why is it pointing at the snake? Or is that like some kind of watermark? And that is the final page. And actually, okay, so this last uh, page, the fan work art, I've seen it before. Uh, I forgot what his name. Hold on. I think they have it somewhere here. They have to have it somewhere here. Here we go. So. At Rid on DeviantArt, he makes, or yeah, I'm pretty sure he makes these really cool comparisons of attacks in Toriko between our planet and then what's going on in Toriko. So for an example, you see planet Earth right there on the bottom, and then you see the Toriko world, the Neptune class planet, and then you see what's going on there with the attacks, and you see just what the scale is compared to our planet. It's phenomenal. So if you haven't seen this on DeviantArt, then they show it to you on Manga Stream after the chapter. It's a very good piece of fan art. Very good piece. I like it a lot. And here, the Demon King doing his thing. That's the Demon King. And then you see Akasha's hand. And then you can compare this to, once again, planet Earth. And see how small it is. All right, people. <sighs> wow. That's it. That's it. I'm done. Toriko is officially done. Now, of course, I'll be doing other videos pertaining to Toriko, obviously. And Toriko characters will be in future versus matchups when I do get to them, and I will get to them. But aside from that, I mean, this is this is it, man. No new. Toriko content coming out, unless Mujitoshi wants to do something else for Toriko, which may or may not happen, I'm not too sure. It has been one hell of a fucking ride. It has been a crazy adventure. 
these past two chapters pretty damn strong, especially considering how rushed Torika was towards like the midway, towards I I would say like the start of the time skip. Fuck, man. Fuck, bro. That's it. That's it. That's it. We got it all. At the end, we did get it all. We did get pretty much everything. And knowing what space had to offer, it's crazy. But it just sucks so much that we're not going to see it. Probably. I can't say for certain, but probably. So that's it, folks. I'm done. King Laning. Oh, I'm a Toriko cat. King of Laning. Once again, there's going to be more Toriko stuff to come on this channel. Not done yet. I still have reviews to do, and I still got discussion videos to do and top 10 stuff. So I'm not done yet, but it just like it hits, man. It hits right fucking here because I love Toriko. I love this shit. All right, well, I'm done. King of Laning. Rate the video, comment. Subscribe, and I will see you guys and gals later for certain. Peace. Have a nice goddamn day. And Mitsutoshi, for these past eight and a half years, thank you. Sincerely, thank you. All right, it has been an awesome journey, a crazy journey, an epic journey of huge proportions. And even though it got rushed, still loved it. So, on that note, I'm going to see you cats later. Have a nice one. Kono yo no. Subete no shokuzai ni kansha o komete. Itadakimasu.